What's up, Street Talks? This is Eric Kim from the Eric Kim Street Photography Blog. So I just wanted to do this quick presentation talking about what is quote unquote street photography. And I think there's a lot of myths and misconceptions about street photography in terms of what it is, what it isn't. Of course, everything I say in this video is just my personal opinion and there's no right or wrong. But I hopefully will just want to clear the air in terms of what I think is street photography and the importance of making street photography your own, meaning Everyone else in the world has their own definition of street photography, but you obviously have your own personal view of street photography. And you shouldn't let other people dictate what they think their definition is of street photography and impose it upon you. So, uh, for example, when I started street photography, the simple answer was taking candid photos without permission of people in public and doing it you know, mostly in black and white and capturing decisive moments. And this was inspired by Henri Cartier-Bresson, who was like the founder of street photography, shot with the Leica, black and white film, 50 mil, more or less his entire life. And because I felt street photography had to be shot this way, I think it really restricted me creatively because I was focusing on shooting street photography the way Henri Cartier-Bresson saw street photography, not the way I saw street photography. And I saw a lot of differences between me and Henri Cartier-Bresson. Him being that he was more of a painter, he was more of a surrealist, and he was very introverted. Myself, on the other hand, I'm, I study sociology, I've always been interested in people, communities, and I'm a pretty big extrovert. And so uh, the way I used to shoot street photography was look for interesting backgrounds, wait for the right people to enter the scene, and it was much more about you know, following the tips and techniques of another photographer rather than doing what was natural to myself. For me, I love to engage with people, like to talk with people. Even nowadays, uh, the style of street photography I would shoot is called street portraiture, which I just think is just another different way to shoot street photography. And so um, the question is, what is quote, quote street photography? For me, street photography is all about documenting humanity. And that could be something as broad or specific as you want it to be. Um, for me, street photography, you don't have to photograph people necessarily. For me, I think street photography should be done in somewhat of a public space. And the public space could be different things to different people. So a public place could be a metro. Some people, they don't consider that a public place. Uh, it could be a park. It could be a beach. It could be on the streets. It could even be at a mall. You know, is a mall a public place or not? It depends on what country you live in. But uh, I think the common thing is what we're all trying to do as street photographers is in our own unique and special way, document humanity. And for me, documenting humanity is important because having studied sociology, human beings are social creatures and without humanity and the rest of society, we couldn't live. And documenting humanity is about documenting the human condition, uh, the joys, the happiness, the sorrow, the difficulties, um, these beautiful fleeting moments, which means what makes it to be human. And I think generally what makes a great street photograph are two things. One is the composition and the moment you capture. And two is the emotion, the content of the photograph. And so for me, if a street photograph doesn't have a strong sense of emotion, to me it's kind of dead and kind of pointless because I think photographs should communicate some sort of message or emotion or expression to the viewer and perhaps change his or her way of seeing uh, the world. And there's lots of different styles of quote quote street photography. And once again, this is not an ex in a, a fully comprehensive list in terms of different styles of street photography, but different styles which I've seen in street photography. And I think the easiest way to describe street photography, it's kind of like rock music. So if you guys have ever listened to rock music, there's like a bajillion subgenres. There's heavy, you know, there's rock and roll, there's classic rock, there's punk rock, there's new age rock, there's Christian rock, there's satanic rock, there's probably satanic Jesus worshipping rock somewhere in the world. But once again, uh, sometimes what a lot of musicians forget is they're all more brothers and sisters than enemies, but everyone's trying to vilify each other because everyone thinks that their version of rock music or music is legitimate, whereas everyone else is illegitimate. Same thing as street photography. We all shoot street photography differently, and I think that's wonderful because the more different ways we shoot street photography, the more we could grow the genre as a whole and also contribute our particular vision and vision with the rest of the world. So these are just some street photography um, styles that I commonly see and things that I have done in my personal experience. So one of them is street portraits. So essentially you're capturing the soul of a person, and that could mean stopping a person in the streets, asking for permission, 
posing and directing them. It could be with permission, without permission. It doesn't really matter how close or far you get. And it's funny because a uh, portrait doesn't necessarily just mean a headshot of somebody. It just means a likeness of somebody. And so if you think about a family portrait, it's an entire likeness of a family, not just individual headshots. And uh, different street photographers to study who specialize in street portraits. A lot of uh, recent modern work by Bruce Gilden is one. Another great street portraitist is uh, Diane Arbus, who would often stop people in the streets and shoot uh, chilling photos of them. Uh, another, and you know, just because you shoot one style of street photography doesn't mean uh, you can't shoot others. Even Anders Peterson, uh, Jakob Sobel are people who are photographers who stop people in the streets, ask to shoot their portrait. And when it comes to shooting street portraits, if you're a little bit more timid in starting street photography, you don't like to shoot candid without permission, you're afraid of getting punched in the face, it never hurts to ask for permission. And sometimes the meanest looking people could actually be the nicest people. So for example, this one guy I saw in downtown LA late at night, whenever I see a guy with a neck tattoo, um, I always like to ask for permission because I feel a little bit afraid. So I approached this guy and I said, oh, excuse me, sir, I love your tattoos. You mind if I get a shot of you? And he said, yeah, sure. And he was really nice about it. I take two photos with a flash. And after I took the photos, I quite like the little hearts or the little butterflies in the background. It makes him look softer, more gentle, rather than uh, most of society looking at him and just being afraid of him just because he has all these tattoos on his face and his neck. Another, of course, the main style of street photography is shooting candid photos without permission. This is where you see an interesting scene, an interesting person, an interesting moment. And you just want to capture what Henri Cartier Bresson calls the decisive moment, is the moment where it tells a great story. Uh, moment where the timing is really important and so for this photograph I was in Marseille with my my buddy Eves see this guy just passed out on the water I took out my camera took five or six photos and what I love about the photo is that it's so open-ended the viewer could make up his or her own interpretation of the scene and so for me this kind of looks like you know this guy lost at shore this guy is like passed out he just got shipwrecked and or it could be maybe he's just kind of daydreaming thinking about life and one thing I think, uh, one reason why I think a lot of people like to shoot candid street photography is because it looks less posy. But just because you've asked for permission from a photo doesn't mean it has to be someone just looking at the camera looking cheesy. So even this street portrait that I shot, even though it's a photo with permission, it doesn't look posy. And it's, I think, a genuine uh, moment of how he feels and how he looks. Another practical tip is if you see somebody on the streets, you could just say, look into the lens and don't smile. And that's the tip I got from Martin Parr. And it just generally makes people look a lot more natural. Another type of street photography that I see is urban landscapes. So with urban landscapes, you know, there's no people in it. And it's kind of documenting humanity through the buildings or the man-made structures that we see in the world. And this type of street photography, I think, is very useful if you live in a suburban area or an area where there's not a lot of people uh, living. And so, for example, when I was living in uh, Michigan, I was in East Lansing while Cindy was studying at Michigan State University. Not a lot of people walking in the streets. And even when you go to Detroit, where I shot this image, there's really not that many people on the streets. So if you just pigeonhole yourself into thinking street photography has to only be of people, you really limit yourself creatively. And I think it's also really frustrating. And I think the key of making a good urban landscape is trying to capture some sort of emotion, soul, and also composition is very important because you want to fill the frame. You don't really want to have subjects overlapping. Um, sometimes you could do it intentionally if you want to, but it's about capturing some sort of emotion or mood um, without having any people in it, but still documenting or showing humanity in one way or another. I think another way you could do street photography is just making witty observations or finding interesting juxtapositions in the world. So for example, uh, for this photograph, just think to yourself, what kind of symbolism or message or what's kind of weird about this uh, image? For me, it's like this 1984 Big Brothers watching a security camera in the middle of nowhere and the middle of the desert. So I guess maybe a story might be no matter where you are, the government's always watching you. And, uh, you know, modern society is kind of like this. They talk about the police surveillance state, especially in London where there's CCTVs everywhere. Or if you're uh, if you have a Google account, you know, Google's always watching you. So I think this is a great way to street, shoot street photography because... You don't need an amazing camera or you don't need to live anywhere particularly unusual. It's more about having a sharp eye and making witty observations about, uh, about the rest of the world. Another, uh, another way I've been shooting street photography is just photographing just stuff on the ground. Is photographing interesting things you find on the ground like 
an empty glove, uh, I don't know, depending where you live, like an empty condom. Or even in this case, I was in Istanbul, uh, I got invited into someone else's uh, house who happened to be uh, an animator. And he made these fake, uh, fake sculptures for war movies and I just photographed it on the ground with my dirty Nike shoes. And I just thought it was just kind of a weird little... Kind of similar to the previous thing, like a witty observation or something that's a little bit more surreal. And this is probably a little bit, maybe not street photography because it's not really shot in a public place, but just because, um, you know, it doesn't have a person in it, once again. Uh, look for objects, things on the ground. It could be things in the sky. It could be things at eye level, things that people throw away, trash, rubbish. And it's just a simple way to shoot street photography. And yeah, I think that's, um, that's it for now. So just know that at the end of the day, street photography is whatever you make it. And uh, at the end of the day, make street photos which speak to your heart, which communicate some sort of message that um, you want to communicate to the viewer, whether that be positive or negative. And remember, at the end of the day, the best street photos are the ones that come from the heart. So until next time, guys, uh, thank you for watching. More of these videos to come. Peace out.